Hi, my name is Allie Fletcher and I'm a professor at UCLA in statistics and electrical engineering and mathematics. And I consider myself to be a algorithms and mathematical person who's very interested in computational neuroscience and working in systems neuroscience. So in order to bring everyone together, I think we really need to remember that we all have the same goal, and that's understanding the brain. And we're all really excited about that. It's this complicated, interesting problem that we all feel very passionately about, and it's really at the heart of what makes us human. So it's really easy to get caught up in your own expertise area and your area, your domain area, and think that the questions you're asking and the part of the brain you're probing and the way you're probing the brain is the right thing. And you know, you look at the people, the fMRI people with their voxels, the neurophysiologists with their single neurons, the connectome people mapping out synapses, um, the cognitive scientists asking higher order questions, and the theorists who maybe are balancing information theoretic and metabolic constraints. So they're all right. We're all doing the right thing. This is a really big, complicated problem, and it's going to take everyone talking to everyone. We need to honor each other. We need to communicate with each other. And moving forward, we need to be really be speaking the same language to each other. So I think really that has to start at the undergrad level. And maybe we have to realize we're doing biology, but biology is now a little bit quantitative. So there has to be a little bit of machine learning. There has to be a little bit of math. There has to be a little biology. But you know, moving forward, those of us who are already at the expert level, um, we really need to talk to each other. We need to really be willing to walk across the street, and step out of our building, and actually go and communicate with people in their domain. And that puts you in the really uncomfortable position of asking questions and feeling, you know, it's, it's uncomfortable as an expert to move somewhere and not be an expert. We have to be willing to ask dumb questions. And coming to neuroscience in the last year, I have probably asked a million dumb questions. Well, at least, at least 100 dumb questions. But people are nice. We all have the same goal. And we're all moving toward that goal. Beyond that, I don't, I don't know how to make that happen. You know, with grad students, I guess, you, know, you offer them free food, they come. So maybe it's tapas, maybe it's margaritas. I don't know, but that's what we need to be doing. Theory matters for, in neuroscience for all the same reasons it matters in all science. And really, science is about having a provable, quantifiable hypothesis that we can either falsify or verify. And for us, we really want a succinct explanation or overarching compact principle that explains the complexity that is neuron, brains, and behavior. So how do we get there? Well, one of the great things about theory is that it allows someone to step back away from the technological limitations and the feasible testability of their time. They can actually think about things that cannot yet be verified. And we can look at Einstein's you know, um, gravitational waves, or we can look at Einstein's theory of the static universe, or we can look at Barlow's redundancy reduction theorems. All of those were ahead of their time. They couldn't be tested when they were posited. Two of them were true, one of them was false. We learned something by them taking that step forward and us trying to think about measuring it. So that being said, I think now in neuroscience, it's an exciting time to not be doing theory for theory's sake, but to actually be doing theory in order to engage with people on this incredible data out there that is going to answer questions that we've all been looking for for a long time. So really, at the heart of it, we need to think about what questions to ask, what questions can be asked, how we can possibly ask them, and after they're asked, how in this forest of data do we somehow pluck out an answer? And I really think this isn't going to take theorists. It's going to take theorists talking to experimentalists and experimentalists talking to engineers and engineers talking to algorithms and math people. And it's going to take this group of four, you know, really this group of four where there's blurring of all the edges to get together and attack the problem. So that being said, once we're all communicating, I think the importance of theory will be more and more clear as there are more and more successes of theory. And I think the environment that we're all setting up right now, where people are more and more open and ready to talk to each other, and data is more and more likely to be shared, and we're all trying to start to speak to each other toward this common goal, there's going to be more and more theory that is successful.